Okay, so I'm just going to give a little bit of a talk here about sustainability, coronavirus, and real estate, because yeah, 2020 has been rather, rather a surprise to, to all of us, and hasn't it? I mean, I, I was expecting to be spending most of this year talking about climate change and sustainability, but um, that lasted a couple of months, and then, frankly, it's been COVID-19 all the way down, as they say. But actually, um, being very, very much a glass half full type, type of chap, I think this is actually represents possibly the greatest opportunity um, for the whole real estate industry, but for, for particularly for the techno technology side of things, because sustainability, climate change and coronavirus actually are giving us a flywheel of change, because when it boils down to it, to deal with one, we actually have to deal with the other. And the way to look at the, the pandemic is it's, it's, like a, it's like what um, anyone in tech would know is a, a forcing function. So it's a forcing function. It's forcing things to happen faster than they would have, would have done anyway. And I, I personally think that what we're looking at is five to 10 years um, change in the next 12, to, in the next 12 to 18 months. So things are going to be pushed on at the most extraordinary rate. Now, the, if you look back to uh, this, um, Rahm Emanuel was um, Obama's chief of, chief of staff and previously was mayor of Chicago. And during the great financial crisis, he, he reiterated that you never let a serious crisis go to waste. And then he added, and what I mean by that is there's an opportunity to do things you could not do before. And I think this is part of the great opportunity. There are things that are going to be possible today that people have been trying to do for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and haven't been able to do. And now they will happen absolutely over, overnight. So this is, this is what I thought would have been going on in the world. This is a, a quotation from Larry Fink, CEO of uh, BlackRock, in his letter to shareholders of January 2020. He was talking about a fundamental reshaping of finance based around climate change, driving a profound reassessment of risk, and we anticipate a significant re reallocation of capital. So I was looking for, the, for climate change to really become a big risk, a big thing, particularly as he wrote these five words, which are absolutely extraordinary in, in their power. Climate risk is investment risk. Now, the point here is this is, if you like, the money talking. And when the money is bothered about their investment risk, things happen. So regardless of whether the money is in the slightest way interested in climate risk, because they saw climate risk is investment risk, you could be pretty sure stuff was, go stuff was going to be happening. And so, and he went on to say, our investment conviction is that sustainability and climate integrated portfolios can provide better risk adjusted returns to investors. Now, real estate was going to be absolutely in the crosshairs of all this, because we all know the real estate industry is an absolute environmental horror show. We, real estate uses 40% of the world's energy and is responsible for 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. In New York, buildings are responsible for 66% of greenhouse gas emissions. So we were very likely to see some sticks coming down there, some carrots coming down the line, but actually much more likely some really big sticks were about to be wielded. So for instance, the New York City um, uh, gov government mandated that buildings had to produce 40% less greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, and it was gonna start being measured in 2025, and you were about to get, you were going to get a very big slap if you didn't look as if you were on your way to, to, to moving. So a lot, of, a lot of stuff was happened. So that's what I thought was going to happen. And I could have gone on and on about that's where it was going to be. But this is what will happen. Because what is happening now changes everything. Because what people want in the future will not be what they wanted in the past. And actually forget the word want, what people demand in the future will not be what they wanted in the, in the past. And there's a big difference when customer demands something rather than they just want something. But there's two new zeitgeist changing norms going on at the moment. The first is that we now all realize that away from the safety of home, out there can be scary, it can be dangerous, and it can be unsafe. What we've also realized is it is actually possible for the whole world to go down at the same time. 
So people have been talking about this in climate, climate risk for a long time that, oh, well, it affects this country, but it doesn't affect that, that country. We've now seen how it, how it is possible for something to affect the whole planet at the, at the same time. But also there's a point of smell that air. For the first time, there's hundreds of millions of people around the world who have smelt fresh air. This is Jalanda in northern India. Now, I am told that for the last 30 years, the Himalayas, which are 200 kilometers away from Jalanda, are not visible. But suddenly, they are visible. So extraordinary things are happening. So the pandemic is upending real estate. We've had 10 years of a bull market. Companies were optimized for the world as it was, and that meant there wasn't a lot of innovation because people criticize the real estate industry for not being very innovative. But the reason it wasn't very innovative is because it did not need to. Life has been pretty damn good for 10 years. Who needs any innovation? But now we are finding our offices, oops, they're empty. And actually, we know our customers never like them very much anyway. If you look at Leesman Index, roughly half of, half of the people surveyed, over 700,000 people in the Leesman Index surveys, said that um, they don't believe their workplace enables them to be productive. And they're not used very much anyway. Now we've known this before, but it didn't matter before because, well, it just didn't matter before. But on top of that, now people are actually scared of offices. So they don't particularly like them and now they're scared of them. And oops, it turns out they might not even need them anymore. The great global work from home, remote working experiment has turned out to be a lot better and a lot more successful than many people think. So this time is different. The, the entire real estate downturn playbook has to be upended. Because the, typically, as you go into a real estate downturn, you would cut your overheads, you would cut your capex, you would cut your expenditure, and you'd hunker down because the only thing that mattered would be to survive. That's how it works in real estate. Boom. That won't work this time. You cannot do what you've done before this time because the lack of demand is not a cyclical market issue, it's an existential health and safety one. This time, the only way through the crisis will be to spend money. We're not gonna save our way through this crisis, we're gonna to have to spend our way through this crisis. So we are gonna to have to spend our money on upgrades to ventilation systems, on new materials, hardware, fittings, furnishings, cleaning regimes, cleaning processes. We're gonna to have to spend it on communication, on data, on analytics, on interactions with our customers, on increased staffing, on new business models, and even new ideas about what constitutes the office and even work itself. So in a sentence, everything that we know we should have done over the last 10 years, but have not had to, we need to do now. And that's why everything changes, because what's gonna matter now Indoor air quality, we know air quality, we know the world around us can kill us. People are scared about going into buildings. They're going to need to, be, they're going to, need to trust the operator of a building that they're putting them in a safe and healthy environment. And we will not know that without having details about the indoor air quality. And the indoor air quality in an awful lot of commercial buildings is shockingly bad. It's just we never really cared before. Few people actually need an office. Need in the sense of, I need an office to do my work. The point is we have now got to make people want an office. And what has become clear from all the working from home is that on our own, we can work any, anywhere. It's, it's happened. All the doom mongers saying, oh, you could never work, you can't do anything from home. It's turned out to not be true. But what we miss is working with our teams, serendipity, collaboration. We need our teams and that's what the office is for. The office is distributed on a sliding scale. For, so depending what type of company you are, the percentage of you that all need to schlep up to a central business district each day is gonna be on a sliding scale and you're gonna find companies much more distributed, different parts of the company, different employees go to different places and work in different places at different times. We're going to have less office space but it's gonna be better. In fact, it's gonna have much less office space, but it's gonna be much better. This is completely analogous to retail. We're gonna end up with a lot less retail, but the retail we end up with is gonna be much better. And the flex market is the market. 
There's been an assumption that the flex market is a subset of the market. It's not. You're going to find everybody wants flexibility, regardless of size. And then to really make an office work, it's going to be a combination of the hardware of the building, the software that helps you run the building, and the services that are provided to the occupiers of that building. So if we start thinking of office as software, office as an iPhone, office as hardware plus software plus services, that's where we need, need to go. So the winners in this new world are going to be whoever enables the bullet points I just mentioned.